Good. I want to speak on, uh, you know, on, on a topic I've entitled Living for Posterity, Living for, pros for Posterity. Uh, this month is our family month, and uh, last week uh, our senior pastor began us uh, on, the, on, 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 on the note of parenting or, or raising up children. And uh, today we want to look at uh, living a life whereby we're living for posterity. We're living for posterity. We're living for posterity. Uh, what we want to talk about is uh, living a life that is intentional, uh, you know, or having our, uh, our, the next generation in mind, uh, having our children in mind, and how they will live when we will no longer be here. Uh, so we're living our lives today, though as much as we live our current lives, we are living our lives uh, with posterity in mind, with posterity in mind. Uh, you know, what I, I want us to, let me say this at the beginning, is that uh, we should not only think about, uh, the, you know, our posterity, but we should also plan for our posterity. You know, we should also plan for our posterity. We should not only think about uh, the next generation, we should also plan for our next generation. Um, this is so important, uh, not only to us individually, but it's uh, really important to us uh, as a country, as a community, as a church. You know, we should be thinking and planning for uh, the next generation. We should be thinking and planning for the next generation. Uh, as, as, you know, as a, as a family unit, we should also be planning and thinking for the next generation. Are we together? Now, that's so important. Uh, things don't just happen. Things are made. All right? Things don't just happen. They are, they are made. And uh, if we sit and expect things to be better in our country, uh, it, it, surely, let me say, things may not be good. Uh, if we sit and hope that things will be better, you know, uh, with our children, then uh, we may be in for a root shock that things may not turn as we expect. And for your information, it's not what you expect that always comes. All right? Many a times the unexpected happens. But so, what should we do? So the wisdom in the word of God tells us that we have to plan for our posterity. We have to plan for the next generation. We have to plan as a county. We have to plan this as leaders. And so this morning, as I'll be talking really, uh, uh, I know that uh, the, the, this, this is very important. This is very important. If you are a leader, if you are, uh, you know, a leader in any capacity, I, I think this is very relevant for you. Now, uh, a generation should be an improvement of its previous. Now, I want to say something about this. A generation should be an improvement of its previous. Uh, that word particular I used, uh, that word I used uh, should be, uh, uh, is an ideal uh, word that uh, every generation should be a better improvement of the previous. It should. And why am I saying this? Because of this. Um, every generation builds on the previous generation. And we build on the previous generation in terms of knowledge, in terms of culture, in terms of 
uh, um, understanding. Like for example, this generation that we are in now, uh, I've borrowed some things from the previous generation. And uh, like for example, how do we document our, our data these days? You know, long ago, uh, data was just stored in the mind of someone. You remember those days? Were you alive those days? Whereby data was only in the mind of someone and was relayed through stories and songs. You remember those days? How we used to sing around the fireplace? So we didn't have data stored in gadgets or not even in writings. And after some times, we had data recorded in books, in, you, know, you remember the papyrus on the skins. You know, data was kept somewhere and was passed from one generation to the other. But nowadays, you know, generations have come and have improved on each other. Until today, you know, data is, 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 is kept and is passed on in very sophisticated ways. So you expect that the next generation that is coming after us, they will not go back to the age whereby you remember how information was, was carried those days, uh, how people would go up on a hill and light up a fire and smoke would go up and now people would say, oh, someone is talking, someone is talking, look at the hill. You know, we don't expect the next generation going that way. And for your information again, we, we don't expect the next generation writing uh, letters, P.O. books. You know, the other day I looked at something. Do you remember the private bag? Do you know that bag? I wonder how it looked like. No, we don't expect ourselves to go back, the next generation to go back to the age of private bag. You know, I, I saw, this was, I saw that thing the other day. You know, uh, you know the organization which had the private bags, you know, those were the real guys, you know? Uh, not individuals who are just uh, allowed to have the private bags. Uh, you remember those days we had the telephone? Eh? The line telephones, remember those ones? The, 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 the real one that just came physically. And you just saw it coming and, and landing into your house. Who had those lines? Uh, uh, sure, we now have the real, the real old moneyed people here. Hmm? You know, not everybody had those telephones, you remember that? So we don't expect you to say, please, pastor, pray for me. I'm looking for posts and poles. I want lines to come to my house. We are not going there. Because every generation should be an improvement of its previous. Are we now together on that understanding? Every generation should be an improvement. Now, and this is based on knowledge. Now, there is something I once said here, that human beings don't evolve. Uh, the theory of evolution, at times I think people uh, misunderstand, you know, this issue of evolution when it comes, they say that, okay, humans have evolved. Really, we have never evolved as human beings. But what has evolved is our expressions. Our expressions have evolved because we do things differently. And how do we do these things differently is based on the available knowledge. So knowledge keeps evolving and that evolution of knowledge affects how we do things. And so at times people think we have evolved, but as human beings, God created us perfect and nothing is evolving in us. You know, he created us with a complete kidney, a compl you know, complete system as human beings. But what keeps evolving is knowledge. What keeps evolving is knowledge. And each generation should be an improvement of the previous generation. Now, 
If that's the case, I want us now to look at uh, some lessons uh, from the Word of God, and I want us to look at this great king called uh, King uh, David. King David. Let's turn our Bibles in. Um, let's go to First Chronicles chapter 29. We'll just read two verses, and those that will be the basis of our studies and our uh, our lesson this morning. Uh, First Chronicles chapter 29, verses 1 and 2. Then King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task is great because this palatial structure is not for man, but for the Lord God. With all my resources, I have provided for the temple of my God. Now, this is the story of uh, King David and his son uh, Solomon. All right? Uh, tell your neighbor, this is my story and, and the story of my posterity. All right? Uh, so it's the story of David as a great king. We all of us know David was a great king. He was not a mere man. Uh, to this day, uh, we know in the history of Israel that David was a great king. And not only was he uh, a great king uh, out there, he was also uh, a man who ordered his family uh, towards the same. So we read about King David, and uh, the first thing we read from, we get from that scripture is that one, David understood the uniqueness of the call of God upon Solomon. All right? Now listen to this. This is very important. If we have to live our lives with posterity, in mind, we have to understand the uniqueness of the next generation. We have to understand the uniqueness of the call, the purpose, and the very thing which God has set apart for the next generation. We have to look into the heart of God and know what is God planning for the next generation. So David looked into the eye of his son Solomon and he realized that God was calling Solomon for something very special. You have to look down into your children and look at that son, look at that girl and understand the uniqueness of the call of God upon their lives. If we have to live with the next generation in mind and impact them positively, we have to know the uniqueness of the call of God upon their lives. So David, as a parent, looks at Solomon, his son, and he says, my son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, the one whom God has chosen. So David understood that yes, I could be having my own will. I could be having my own plan towards my child. But David understood also that it's not only enough to think about what I'm planning for my child, but he said, the Lord has called and has chosen him for a purpose. So as a nation, we have to know, we have to know the uniqueness of the call of God of the ways of God, of the things which God has prepared for the next generation. Because that forms the basis of our interaction and preparation as we prepare the next generation. Because if we do not know what God has called them for, then why, what uh, will we be preparing them for? So as a people, we have to, to understand this. So David understood the uniqueness of the call of God upon his son uh, Solomon. 
The second thing we see from that uh, scripture is that David addressed the possible challenges for his son. This is very important. Not only did David understand that God was calling his son for a unique work, but he also addressed the possible challenges that would befall his son. Now, as a parent or as a worker today or someone who is alive in this generation, we have to look into the next generation and identify the possible challenges that would come to our next generation. And so David understood uh, and, and looked into the life of his son Solomon and understood that yes, God has called him, yes, there is a unique call of God on the life of Solomon, but he also looked at possible challenges that would befall his son. Now, we read here, uh, and, so, and David said, my son Solomon, uh, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. Is young and inexperienced. You know, that's a very important thing we have to know as parents, really. You should be able to look into the eye of your child and be able to identify the possible challenges that would befall your child in the next generation. I've been preaching in several schools around, and uh, you know, one of the things that has really amazed me is the numbers in our high schools. I know a number of us could be teachers. You know, some times ago, I was with our brother Mandela at Kapsabet High School, and I looked at that school. Wow. It's bashing with children. Go to any school today, even the small school. You know, I was, uh, I was told by uh, someone about a school in Keio, a school down, K E 10 There is a school down there. I don't want to say the name. Maybe you could be the principal there, and then you just switch me off. Hmm? And uh, I was told that this school, a school right deep in the village, you know, the land of Irong, the Irongians, you know, that school had an enrollment of four, over 400 uh, students for Form 1. That's only for one enrollment was over 400. Now, you know, that's a school, if I tell you, you would just ask yourself, what are people going to do down there in the village? And in our day, you know, during our days, a whole high school would be 400 students. From one all the way to from four. But nowadays, just a single class has an enrollment of over 400. But that's a small school. Of course, the big schools know. Uh, the big schools have large enrollments, just a single class. Now, uh, I was preaching in another school uh, here, also within our county. That's Paul Boit. I think I can say the name that. And you know, the numbers are so large that they cannot hold any meeting in any room. If the old school have to come together, <laughs> what do they do? They do an open air crusade. So the other day we were there for a rally, and guess what? I was like Reynard Bonke. You know, those are the photos you can take and people think you are very famous. <laughs> Large crowds. And you put on the posters with my hand lifted and you say, wow, the anointed man of God. Look at the crowds. You know, you don't have to work for such crowds nowadays. We've got numbers. 
And I was asking my, one of the principals, and I was asking, what really changed? And you know what they tell us? Do you know what is called uh, transitions? What is that called? 100% what? Transitions. So I asked myself, what? So you mean we had all these large numbers of dropouts? If all these people have now come to school, then it means we had large numbers of dropouts. But for a moment, I just thought and I said, yes, that is affecting, but really, there is something that has changed in our world. It has changed in our world. Do you know what has changed? Especially in Africa. Do you know what has changed? The children we gave birth are now up and running. Our numbers have ballooned. Yeah. The children which we gave birth are now up. And our numbers have ballooned. So the thing I was asking myself, where will all these numbers go after school? Where will they go? Now we are opening up Tibet all over. That's a good idea. Now we are opening up MTCs. You know, these days, just walk down the street, you will not miss to see the MTC uniform. Do you know that uniform? The nurse's one, the blue. You don't miss. We have these almost in every village nowadays. Now, the question is, as a nation, as a people, where are we taking our children? We are churning out, we are taking them to the university, we are churning them to the, into, we are taking them into the TVETs, we are taking them into all this. Uh, but what is our elaborate plan for this next generation? <laughs> Let me tell you, friends. Hey, issues and employment will be a serious issue in the next few days. Are you listening to me? And so, as parents, what are we preparing for the tomorrow's challenges that will befall our children? <laughs> Let me tell you, my friend. You know, we were told education is the key. The key to where? You will be having a key but without a door. <laughs> Are you listening to me? <laughs> Gone are the days where we had a single graduate, you know, graduate in our whole, our whole location. So as parents, what are we planning for the next generation? Now listen to me, please. David looked at his son, looked at the possible challenges that were befalling him, and one of the things he's looking at, uh, one is saying that David uh, would have a, a challenge with his age. And the other thing is experience. But before going to that, let me say this. Okay, listen to me well. Listen to me well. You could be saying, I don't have a child, I'm not uh, married, I'm all this. But you could be a CEO somewhere. You could be working somewhere. If we have to tame the challenges that will befall our children, Issues ya kusema, soma uandikwe kazi has to stop. And it must stop now as I command. Can we say amen? amen? Are you listening to me? So if you, we educate our children eh, with the mentality we had, 
so that uandikwe ukwe eh? you become like our madam here officer how many offices are there for the officers can we have all the offices for all these children that are coming out i'm telling you that will be a big disappointment So, as a nation, we have to plan for our children, for the next generation in our hearts. And not, not so as a nation, you have to plan as a parent. <laughs> Let me tell you the truth. Friends, Chelimo, take your children to school. Let them get the best education. But the challenge is up there. Yeah? You may not get the best employment you want for your child, but you can create the best employment your child can own. Are you listening to me? You know, the other day, my daughter, uh, thank God I'm going to change your vision. I'm so happy just before saying it. You know, my, my daughters, when I just CBC, what they are told, they are told uh, at some age to, 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 write, to write what they want to be. Do you know what my daughter wrote that she wants to be? Oh, my heart sank. I almost fainted. Hmm? <laughs> you know, my daughter wrote in school and said, I want to be a baker. I said, really? I'm taking you to school so that you become a baker? See, I can just teach you baking here. Hmm? <laughs> and you people know, for those who know my girl, my girl is very smart. So I said, with all this intelligence, you just want to become a baker? And you know, definitely that was motivated, got motivation from the cousins. <laughs> we have some, she has some cousins. One of them is doing some very good, he is a baker. In fact, he was in KTN someday, if you watch. If I tell you the name, you may know. So that is her cousin. And so she has gotten motivation from him. And so she thinks everything in this world is baking. Hmm? But thank God, she's running away from it nowadays. Uh, nowadays, she's saying, I want to be a missionary. So I say, oh, this is better. Hmm? But another thing as a parent, I began thinking about my, my child. So when she was talking of being a baker, then I said, hey, I now need to get land to build an hotel. But I once read something on social media, and uh, of course, I'm not demeaning education, and uh, uh, I also pray that one day I become doctor and professor. You know, having just the name brother, it's not so good. Hmm? <laughs> it's not so good. <laughs> or mister, you see, according to what they're writing, honorable so-and-so doctor, and then you ask, it's only, you only have mister and missus. That is the greatest achievement you have. You are just a lady or a man. Anyway, but someone once said, a, a professor, when a professor dies, does the professor hand over the, you know, the, the hat, the helmet, which they wear? What is that called? Ile kofia ya professor. That's so big, that looks like a helmet. Do you hand it to your child, and you now say you are now professor so-and-so? Can your child inherit your academic credentials? No. But you know what? Your child can inherit kiosk. Okay, can we say amen? <laughs> so please, as much as your professors, put up a kiosk. Because that is far much better. At the end of the day, they can buy soap with it. Can the professors in the house say amen? Can we say we are together, pastor? Leave us an inheritance. 
The second thing, as I bring this to a close, is that we need to leave character uh, an inheritance of character. Now, this is very important. Really, I will tie up this as I finish. Um, if, we, if, you leave your, if we leave the next generation with material inheritance, but we don't leave them with character, do you know what will happen? The very materials we leave them with will destroy them. You know, we work so hard, so hard to acquire things. Hmm? I have a mze who once told me, told me, my friend, you know, he wrote his will. Actually, he's still alive, but he wrote his will some years ago. He wrote his will and told me, Pastor, I will no longer buy land. Then I told him, why? And you are a Kalenji. <laughs> How? Can you say you don't buy land? You know, we have trademarks, we have things. Ukiskia muto anasema proti, proti by brother. Niko na proti, junction, proti ingine iko hapi. Kuna watu wama proti, kama kuna proti, you are not a person. All right? Na kuna watu ya mashamba. Gambe ati proti, nini? Land. Yeah, they have a word in college, they call it kambi. Hmm? But some people don't have issue with that. Now, the greatest thing you can leave as an inheritance is character. Can we say amen? amen. Please. If you leave your child the next generation with resources but without character, you have missed it. 2 Timothy 1.5 says, I have been reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice and I'm persuaded now lives in you. Look at this. Timothy was living his life in his day, and the kind of person we know as Timothy, we realize it's an inheritance. And where was this? It was in his grandmother. And then it came to the mother. And right now it is in, in him. So we've got to pass on values from one generation to the other. Friends, you can leave the greatest inheritance, a material inheritance for a child, but without character, then you, you're done. Let's compare character a little bit, uh, character and, uh, and, and, and material, all right? Um, Proverbs 22, one says, a good name is more desirable than, can we say it? Great riches. Now, if I'm here to tell you, I'm giving out good name here and riches here. How many of us will line for the place in the line of good name? Mutasewa eri kwaribu jina. My brother, I'm going for the riches. But do you know what? If we give you riches without character, you will just lose it. Are you listening to me? Now, listen to this. I got some things I want to read out. Who you are is better than what you have. Write that one down. Who you are is better than what you have. And who you are determine what you have. It is you, it's the who that produces. You know? That's why I don't boast of a salary. And you say, brother, you know, I am earning, is it six digits or how many? Which are the digits we're looking for? 
Negapi? Hey, you know, I am a six digit bro. I'm not just simple. Now listen to me. Do you know that that salary is not your money? Actually, you are given. And if you want to know that it's not your money, get fired. And then we see how much money will you generate. You know, some of us, we are earning so much, but if we are put out there, you cannot even create 100 shillings per day. And that is the predicament we have, actually. Really. We have people in offices, but yet their output is zero. Hey. I'm feeling now, I feel like now i am walked up a little bit. We are filled people in offices, in positions, but their productivity is negative. I really think we need to change how we acquire, we employ people. We ask you, while you are out there, how much are you earning? So don't just come and say, you know, I want 10,000 per day. Can you generate 10,000 from morning until evening? Give us 10,000 and we give you. Can we say amen, all of us who are employed? Yeah. You cannot generate. And you are boasting at us. Nagari alone. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, 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 please. Please, I want to finish this. A good name is better than perfume, than fine perfume, all right? A good name is better than? You know, character is better than makeup. Can the sister say hallelujah? Yeah. Character is better than makeup, brother. Huh? Some of us, the only thing we have is makeup, but no character. Very nice eyelids, na powder. No perfume. A good name is better than? Can we say fine perfume? You know, some of us have a sweet aroma when you move around, but your character is thinking. Thank God for the perfume that has come to help you. Hmm? Please, I think I need to bring these. Otherwise, some people can pick up stones now. The conclusion of the matter. Character is therefore better than material inheritance. Can we say amen? amen? Please, let's work on character, right? Let's pass character to our children. Let's build on our character. Seriously. Seriously. You can have very nice makeup, but you have got no, nobody can stay close to you. You cannot keep relations. You know, you are not warm. You are not just. You don't have character. Character is better than riches. And finally, note that character is the product of the work of grace. You know, when we are saved, let's allow the Holy Spirit transform us, really. Let the Holy Spirit transform our speech. Let the Holy Spirit transform our, our, our interactions. Let's have character. Let's have self-control. Let's have self-control. Character is the work of grace. Let's allow God to do something in our lives. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. You know, God is willing to help us. True, I know we found ourselves in some of these things. We don't know what to do, but God's grace is sufficient. Amen? God's grace is sufficient. Let's pray that we'll pass out virtues to our children. All right? I know you could be dealing with a child that is not uh, becoming, but God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. Let's pray with them. Let's be intentional in raising character in the next generation. Let's stand on our feet, even as we bring this service to close.